Thank you for attending this presentation on polymorph identification using the 1064 nanometer portable Raman instrument. Portable instruments such as the progeny are used throughout the pharmaceutical manufacturing process, <clears throat> as well as the traditional applications for incoming raw material ID and inspection. They are also an integral part of a QAQC process to, to verify retained materials and finished product. They can serve as secondary verification for materials and products at line in the manufacturing process, and they are used to verify finished products at the manufacturing site. Since these instruments are portable, they can also be used off-site in order to detect counterfeits. Now, portable instruments are now considered integral part of the incoming material inspection and have sped up the traditional inspection workflow, which you can see on the left. Previously, in the, looking at the left-hand side, incoming materials were offloaded at the warehouse, quarantined, while samples were physically taken and sent to the analytical lab to verify. This cost both time and money for the testing. By implementing a portable a Raman instrument into the workflow, this whole process becomes more efficient as shown in the, in the workflow on the right. The material arrives in the warehouse, is quickly scanned by the progeny without opening and exposing the sample. And in less than a minute, the sample is verified and released for use. The advantages over the traditional workflow are obvious as there's no risk of contamination, no waiting time for the release to batch, less product movement, and increased inspection rates going towards your 100% uh, ID that is required by many regulatory agencies. And you get a lower cost per analysis for the end, save time and money for the entire system. So another use other than for, uh, other than RMID for the Raman instruments, however, is the verification of materials in the process and also the QA and QC of finished product. One example we're going to be going into in more detail in this presentation is the identification and verification of polymorph type. So incorrect formulations are expensive. And sec so secondary ver verification of materials prior to adding them to a process line and then verification of a finished product can quickly save those costs and prevent any further issues such as recalls. Uh, now, one of the specific concerns for the formulation use is the type of polymorph use. So polymorphs are similar molecularly, but they di differ in the resulting physical characteristics. And these physical characteristics affect the bioavailability of a finished product. So using the Progeny 1064, the user can analyze the formulation quality by checking the, for the correct presence of the API in the finished product. So polymorph identification can be done at any stage of the manufacturing workflow, as shown in this slide. So you can verify the polymorph type prior to addition of materials. So this could be part of incoming inspection of materials, again, at the process site. Also, when the process is completed, the finished formulation can then be checked prior to leaving the pharmaceutical facility. And these steps and checks, while they may seem redundant, can save expensive product recalls or other issues further down the line. So let's take a further look at polymorphs. So polymorphs are different crystal forms of the same solid uh, molecule. This, so polymorphism occurs when a chemical compound crystallizes with a different internal structure or they are all chemicals with the same atomic components, but the physical arrangement of the molecules uh, differ. Now, the definition is given by ICHQ6A, which is the International Council for Harmonization and the Technical Requirements for Pharmaceuticals for Human Use. So this is basically a, uh, brings together all the regulatory bodies and pharma together into one platform. 
Now their definition defines polymorphs as new drug substances which exist in different crystalline forms which differ in their physical properties. Polymorphism may also include solvation or hydration products, pseudopolymorphs, and amorphous forms. So what does the difference in crystal form do? Well, it affects the chemical and physical behavior. So it affects the dissolution rate, solubility, it affects the particle size, it affects bioavailability, and it affects the stability of the, of the formulation. So basically, you're looking at the efficacy and potency of a polymorph API and its ultimate effectiveness um, within the body. So if not identified, incorrect polymorph forms may cause product recall uh, at the very least, which is an expensive proposition for pharma, but it also can um, cause uh, a less effective formulation to be formed. Now there's some examples shown of the most common polymorphs in the spectra on the right hand side. But if we then look at what ICHQ6A uh, has this entire section on identifying polymorphs and shown here is the decision tree flowchart in clarifying and classifying polymorphs. So these guidelines have been implemented by regulatory agencies such as Health Canada and the FDA. Relevant to our discussion, we want to be able to characterize the polymorph forms and um, a number of uh, other techniques are also cited. So we're comparing Raman against the gold standard, for example, which is XRD. And there's also other techniques such as DSC, microscopy, but all of these require an expert user. So we want to take spectroscopy, such as the Raman spectra, and provide a quick screening result. So once the polymorph has been clarified, but classified, sorry, by XRD, you can then build a lot of screening library using the Raman instrument. So what happens in the Raman spectra that allows us to scan for these polymorph forms? Well, Raman is sensitive to changes in crystal size and shape and ultimately packing density. As this affects the way a, a light energy or a phonon interacts within a crystal. So changes in crystal size and shape, for example, affect the ultimate structural changes due to the molecular framework. So we're looking at crystal changes and we're looking at effects of structural changes. So even though we have the same chemical makeup, all of these differences in crystals or structure change, they change the way the light energy interacts with this molecule. And as soon as you change the way the light energy interacts with the molecule, you change the spectra. And this is ref this will be uh, reflected in uh, shifts in energy and shifts in the, in the resulting peaks of the spectra. This of course is uh, dependent on the spectral resolution of the instrument. Uh, so as long as the shifts in the position of the peaks are larger than the spectral resolution, then the instrument will be able to detect this and you'll have a screening technique to determine if you have the correct polymorph type. So when we want to develop this initial polymorph library for screening of polymorphs, we need to build the different forms into the library on the progeny. And to do so, first the polymorph form needs to be verified. Gold standard, as I said, for this is XRD for either the crystal or powder form. So the standards are scanned by the instrument afterwards once they've been verified for the correct polymorph form and they are uploaded into a library. This library has been verified and tested as per USP standards pri prior to deploying at point of use. You can also add the finished formulation to the library and in to ensure final product verification. This instrument can be then be used throughout the pharmaceutical process so you can have it prior to adding the materials to make sure you're adding the correct polymorph form and at the end to make sure you have the correct uh, formulation. So next section 
is we're going to briefly introduce some common polymorph forms. These are both uh, structural and crystalline forms. Um, so there's going to be an excipient and an API, and we'll show you how the Raman spectra on the progeny can differentiate these. The first one is coating materials. Uh, this is a titanium oxide is a common excipient used as a coating material. And it's also an example that shows the crystalline forms of the polymorphs. So we have three common polymorph forms. Two of them are commonly used in pharma, and they're the rutal and then anatase. So that's the, the two most the most common one is is going to be anatase and rutile, and you need to differentiate between the two of them. So due to differences in their crystal unit cell, we're also going to get differences in the associated peak positions. And you can see that in the spectral over, overlay on the right, where we see that there are uh, differences in the peak positions and the number of peaks as well. So Anatase, for example, his peaks at 397, 516, and 638 inverse centimeters. And Rutile has the peaks at 445 and 610 inverse centimeters. Okay. Uh, and, and please note that while the peak positions differentiate the type, finish formulation may show uh, peaks from both forms if it's not really a pure sample. So you're, you're going to have to look not only at the, at the peak positions, but note if there's some small peaks from uh, the different type. If you do, then this is another indication that you actually don't have the pure polymorph in, in the formulation, but you actually have a mix. Okay. Another common um, polymorph is acetaminophen and parsimetol. These, um, it's a common pain re reliever. We we have we call it acetaminophen in the U.S., but it's paracetamol in uh, Europe. So they're both widely used analgesics, and they exist. Sorry, acetaminophen exists in three polymorphic forms: one, two, and three. These are common forms, but form one and two will show packing polymorphisms. So the molecular conformations are the same, but the crystal packing is different. And remember, when you, the packing is different, this may affect the bioavailability and un, other pharmaceutical properties. So the actual commercial form is form one. Form two tends to be less stable and will transform to form one under compression, which typically happens when you make the pill. So these two forms mostly have peak differences in the region 1100 to 1700 inverse centimeters. This corresponds uh, to the amide band region as shown here, amide one, two, and three. Another common uh, API is ritanovir. Now ritanovir is the polymorph form used in formulations was, was uh, subject to a large recall historically because the incorrect polymorph form was used. So this cost, uh, this was a pretty uh, expensive recall and it's a, it's a pretty expensive uh, antiretroviral drug it's used to treat HIV infection. So in 1996, and it had to be withdrawn from the market due to the sudden appearance of this of the stable and less soluble form two in Norvir semi-solid capsules. Okay. So the more stable polymorph forms form two, and but it, it is less, but the incorrect polymorph was found and led to that product recall. So you have to be careful which form you um, add into the formulation to avoid um, less efficacy of your finished uh, product. Now how do we want to go into this into more a little bit more detail? So um, the final part of this presentation is then a quick case study on building a library to screen for polymorph more forms. We're actually going to be using ranitidine, uh, which is 
uh, has several different polymorph forms. And we're going to show how you build a screening library for both pre and post uh, process of the metal of the process, sorry. So building the polymorph library. Ridinidine is known to be more polymorphic and it's used in the manufacture of antacids. So there's two forms we're concerned about, form one and form two. And these differences can be seen in the Swaman spectral overlay in figure one, where the form one of ridinidine is in blue and form two is in orange. Now you can see uh, with the arrows, there are very slight differences in where the peaks are located. So there's just small peak differences at 680, 1050, 1180, and 1650 inverse centimeters. And in the shape of the major peaks at 1250 and 1550 inverse centimeters as shown in the, the bottom spectra where the peaks are circled. Now, we want to be able to differentiate these two so we can first see if there's we can viably differentiate between the two forms by looking at the spectra and also by doing some other types of off instrument analysis so we did a correlation map for example between these two types and we found that there was only a 0.71 correlation between those two so it's, it's theoretically possible to set a cutoff threshold and our, our instrument typically by default sets it at 0 0.8 and that will allow you to differentiate two types. So number one, so as part of a raw material ID and product and prior to a formulation process, we can screen the materials at the line and verify that we are using the correct polymorph form. Then we start to look at the quality check of the formulation. And so after the process is complete, we can then do another check on the finished formulation. And this is an example, Zantac, which is the formulation that we're looking for, should only contain form two of the ranitidine polymorph. So when we look at the spectral overlay of the formulation with the two forms as shown here, we can see if we can differentiate and make sure we're using the correct form. So remember, Zantac should contain Renditine form two. We do a search and we overlay the two materials in the top right spectra and Renditine form two, the formulation is in blue and the Zantac is in orange. And we have a pretty close match with that. If we look at the incorrect form, which is ridididine form one in the bottom spectra and overlay it with the Zantac, we can see, we can try and see if there's more differences that, that we can identify. And if we look at it, it's kind of hard to see in the, in the spectra sometimes. So if we just do a correlation map on it, um, we can uh, then verify that the correct form is in the formulation. So we download the spectra and we see that if we did a correlation comparison of a match to Zantac, form one is only 0 0.3 correlated to Zantac and form two is 0 0.8. So that means that it's quite easy to separate out and, uh, these two forms in the finished formulation despite the fact that there is additional peaks present in the, in, because of the other excipients in the, used in the final formulation. But we can see there's a clear separation, so we can show selectivity between the two forms in the final product. So we would build another screening library right, and do a custom library search of the Finch formulation and to get a pass or a fail criteria here. And, uh, the correlation map results are shown in the bottom where you see that when you do form one and form two and the, how they're related to the to the final uh, Zantac formulation. Okay, so to summarize, 
we were able to use the progeny to differentiate polymorph forms as part of a screening process due to the sensitivity to crystal and packing changes. Once we can differentiate the polymorphs prior to uh, adding them to a process, we can then uh, proceed and also verify the final uh, drug formulation. This allows us to monitor uh, and check for polymorphs prior to process, at the process, and after process. This allows us an easy identification method and perhaps shows us how it's uh, the Rodaku Progeny 1064 nanometer handheld Raman analyzer is a versatile tool that allows the users to build monitoring methods directly on board the unit and control with full control of scanning and model parameters for RMID, process control, and specific custom libraries such as the polymorphs. And we want to thank you for your attendance. And if there's any questions, Feel, please feel free to contact me or I can take some questions on the chat after this, this webinar as well.